So here on the table, I have three ASUS graphics cards, though one of these cards is a five gigabyte variant, which does differ in ways to the six gigabyte and three gigabyte variant in not only the size of the VRAM, but also the bit bus, which has gone from 92 bit to 160 on the five gig model. However, will this make a difference in games? Let's find out here today, but before we do, big thanks to ASUS and NVIDIA for sponsoring out today's video. While I was doing today's benchmarks, I also managed to trial out the new game filter settings, which are phenomenal, and we'll talk about that later as well. With that aside though, let's get on into the meat and potatoes of this video. Welcome back to Tech Yes Sydney. And as always, when you guys come here to see a comparison, you always want the numbers. So let's roll those benchmarks. So as we saw in those results, the 1065 gigabyte model actually falls behind the 1063 gigabyte model, which was a little bit surprising since it does have 1280 CUDA cores, the same as the six gigabyte variant. However, that 192 bit bus going down to 160 on the five gig model does affect performance in not only games, but also synthetic benchmarks. However, these two models here, the ASUS Dual OC and also the Strix are shining examples of how a 1060 should perform. The Dual OC model managed to overclock really well. And as we saw in those noise tests, the DB levels are really low. And then we move up to the Strix 1066 gigabyte with the three fans, that goes to some of the lowest noise I've ever heard out of a graphics card in my life. Not only that, you do get the RGB control and ASUS uh, with their 1060 Strix edition implement what they call auto extreme technology. Essentially, it's a fully automated production method which delivers the best manufacturing quality possible. Also with the Strix three fan edition here, you've got two four pin PWM controlled fan headers which enable you to plug up any normal fan like a Corsair LL fan for example and run that from the graphics card so instead of monitoring your CPU especially if you're playing at 4k for example where the GPU will then be putting out more heat than the CPU you can then use the GPU to monitor those fans you also get the ability to link up the RGB on this graphics card with ASUS's Aura Sync software which does work really well too however back to the Dual OC model here it comes in a white variant and ASUS implement what they call their wing blade fan designs which alpha up to three times quieter noises. Compared to the standard five gigabyte variant, which just uses a generic cooler from ASUS, it was indeed quieter and it was indeed pushing out better overclocks. So their claims do seem legit. Also on the back, you get two HDMI ports with all three of these models, which if you're into VR and immersing yourself, you have that option of using an extra HDMI port. Now the Dual OC, before we move on to some other factors, it does have its two fan design, which Zeus called the wing blade fans. And as we saw, that was performing at a lower noise level than the five gig variant here, which is just a standard edition from a Zeus. But even then, the three models here did perform better than the ASRock RX 580, which is a decent implementation for an AMD graphics card. So now it's time to move a little bit into the NVIDIA software and what's changed with the GeForce experience. So you still have that Ancel implementation. If the game does support that feature, then you can capture some really creative shots. For instance, in Mass Effect Andromeda, you can stop the game and then get a full 360 sketch drawing if you so wish, use that as artwork. But when we move into the new feature, which I really do like, that is Game Filter. You can set up to three different profiles and within that, you can change things like your color, your saturation, and even really cool modes like artistic blurs, bokeh, and even change a sketch mode, which makes the game, in the case of Dota 2, look like Borderlands. So I really like what NVIDIA is doing with the freestyle filter. You can set up a custom hotkey to bring down to the display. Then you can change these settings even in game 
to make the game just look so much different and dare I say, a much better implementation than things like gimmicky HDR, which goes on monitors and doesn't make a difference because when I pull the saturation up and the contrast up, the picture did look a lot better on my 144 Hertz ViewSonic 1440p monitor. So of course you do have to use the GeForce Experience software if you wanna unlock freestyle filter, but on top of that, you can optimize your games with one click of a button, or you can revert them if you don't like what the optimization has done, as well as quickly update your drivers within that software itself. So I'm really loving what Nvidia is doing with the software, and I like what Asus is doing with their six gigabyte and three gigabyte variants here on the table which one of these I'll be giving away to you guys in the audience. So if you want a chance to enter, link is in the description below, completely free international giveaway. And the other 1060 I'll be giving away to one of the kids in the five PCs giveaway to children here on the Gold Coast. However, as opposed to the five gigabyte variant, a subscriber actually sent this in, so I do have to return this. Big thank you for sending that out. And in conclusion, prices. 1066 gigabyte edition. You can get this for 330 US dollars currently, or if you're in Australia, 464 AUD. So it is a premium price generally for the Strix 3 fan models, but you do get that really quiet noise. You do get the good overclock ability. And of course the RGB and the look of this thing and the features is absolutely phenomenal. Then we've got the dual OC model, more of a budget option, but still packing very good quality, especially if you want to overclock or if you want to get the most performance for your dollar coming in at 250 US dollars, or if you're in Australia, 369 AUD. Anyway, with all that aside, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you're into overclocking or if you're into getting the best bang for your buck, I'd probably ignore the five gig model and take a look at either the three gigabyte model or the six gigabyte model. I really do think the three gigabyte model is underrated. It does perform really well, even at 1080p in today's titles with some of the settings maxed out. But when you go to sell a PC, everyone for some reason always wants a six gigabyte. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, then be sure to hit that like button. Also big thanks to Azus and Nvidia for sponsoring out this video. And I'll catch you in the next one very soon. Peace out for now, bye. Completely free international giveaway. The other card I'll be putting in one of the PCs that I'll be giving away to five PCs here on the go, <laughs> to five to five kids, <laughs> to five PCs. I'm giving away a PC to a PC. <laughs> giving away yeah. five kids to five I'm giving kids. away five kids to five PCs again. So, for instance, in Andromeda, Mass Effect, a Mass Effect Andromeda, isn't it? Yeah. For instance, in Mass Effect Andromeda,